The greatest tragedy to ever strike this Ummah was the death of the Prophet If there was ever a time when the Ummah was at risk of losing its clarity, of losing its purpose, of losing its mission, of being entirely paralyzed, it was when the Prophet passed away. Think about how heartbroken we are when we see the images of the Masjid of the Prophet empty. And then think about the companions of the Prophet seeing the Masjid of the Prophet missing the Prophet as the Imam and in his presence and think about how debilitating that would have been. So nothing had the potential to paralyze like the death of the Prophet It is the greatest tragedy by consensus, the Prophet said, that any time you go through a hardship, remember your hardship, remember your tragedy and the death of the Messenger of Allah وسلم, and that would put in perspective your own tragedy. And it talks about Abdullah bin Abbas Abdullah bin Abbas was 13 years old when the Prophet passed away. And this is a young man that spent every possible moment he could with the Prophet And we know that it was extremely heartbreaking for the companions that uh, had had witnessed such a close relationship with the Prophet to think about what it would be like to now live in Medina without him. This the very famous story of Bilal radiallahu anhu Bilal, who could not give adhan in Medina anymore, who broke down at Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, and ultimately had to leave Medina because he Everywhere he looked, he thought of the Prophet So as he's giving the adhan, Ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, he says the name of Muhammad and he breaks down. He looks around Medina and he sees Muhammad وسلم, wherever he is. And he had to leave Medina. Abdullah ibn Abbas was the cousin of the Prophet وسلم, and was the nephew of uh, Maymuna, the wife of the Prophet Sallallahu And he literally slept in the bed of Maymuna and the Prophet Sallallahu at their feet. One of the famous hadith about the Qiyam, the night prayer of the Prophet Sallallahu was Abdullah ibn Abbas Sallallahu Alaihi uh, sleeping at their feet as a child and watching the Prophet Sallallahu uh, wake up and pray. Abdullah ibn Abbas, Abbas used to fetch his wudu for him. He used to go and prepare the wudu for the Prophet Sallallahu he accompanied the Prophet on journeys, sitting behind the Prophet on his riding animal. So he's close to the Prophet. He's someone that the Prophet literally embraced, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, hugged and made dua for multiple times. I mean, what would it be like to be hugged by the Prophet and to have him make dua for you? May Allah allow us that opportunity in the hereafter. Allahumma ameen. And so that's that's a special relationship. When the Prophet ﷺ passed away, Abdullah ibn Abbas anhuma, as a child, and child physically, right? Uh, but definitely not spiritually or mentally or emotionally. Uh, he could have buckled like everyone else. He could have allowed that trauma to consume him. But instead he said that there is an opportunity here that no one else is availing themselves of. And that is that all of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ are back in Medina now. They're all around the masjid now. Everyone has come back to pray janazah on the Prophet to spend time in the city now. Those that went out and those that lived far away from the city. And he said, this is an opportunity for me to go to all of their doorsteps now and to collect knowledge, to ask them about the things that I missed out on because of my age or because of my absence from the mission of the Prophet for the first 20 years of it. Abdullah ibn Abbas was only 10, uh, 20 years into the mission of Islam. And that's because of his family being separated from the Prophet ﷺ, his father, Al-Abbas, uh, being late in his embrace of Islam. And he used every moment of those three years, but he knew he had a lot of catching up to do. So he goes to the houses of the companions, sleeps on their doorsteps, one by one, collects every hadith he possibly can collects every story he possibly can, every account about the Prophet he possibly can. And then he collects that for us to benefit from until today. The point being here is that though he could have just grieved like most people were doing, 
he saw an opportunity in the midst of the greatest tragedy and said, let me be the one to take advantage of that opportunity. And so what I want us to think about in the midst of this crisis that we're in right now, everyone should be thinking, hey, what's the opportunity that others are not taking advantage of? What is the thing that I can do that others are not doing in the community right now, right? And, you know, there are so many things and, and that arena of good deeds is only going to grow because the crisis is going to continue and unfortunately more people are going to pass away and this is going to become more and more difficult for the community. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lighten the burden for us and, and, and heal us of this. Uh, but the opportunities are going to be there. So think to yourself, okay, who's not being tended to right now? What's the good deed that's not being done right now? What's something that I can take advantage of in this crisis and do some good that other people are neglecting? And that's the mindset of Abdullah ibn Abbas and that's why he was able to get ahead. We ask Allah to give us that mindset as well. Ooh.